Good morning. 11.36 a.m. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read along with me word for word. Verse by verse of the scriptures we will be reading today. Okay? Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. Read along with me because I make mistakes sometimes. Okay? Sometimes the mouth will go quicker than the brain and vice versa. So please read along with me. Okay? Please. Today is the 17th. We're going to start in Proverbs 17 to begin with one verse. Verse 1. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. Proverbs 15 verses 14 on to verse 18. The hearts of him that hath understanding departing from evil. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. Knowing what the Lord hates and what the Lord loves. Okay? Knowing what God saith in the scriptures. Pertinent for the dispensation therein. For example, under the law they were forbidden to eat pig. Today, in this dispensation, that um, thing is not there for us today. Under the law, which was, you know, given unto who? The Hebraic Jewish people. Not the Japhethites or the Hamites. Or not even unto the Shemites in themselves. But those that were taken out of Shem, the Hebraic people, the Jews. Okay? The law and the oracles were given unto them. Okay? And the Sabbath was a sign unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, people. But, the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. It begins with wisdom, the fear of the Lord, which will lead on to understanding, which will lead on to knowledge. Okay, knowing something. Neil de Gracie, have you heard of this guy? I, I for for the longest time I was misnaming him. He is a hemetic scientist, very affable. Uh, he's got a kind of a charm and whimsicalness about him. Um, I've, I've actually watched quite a few of his things. Um, he he is a scientist. He's a, he's a big name guy. Neil de Gracie is his name. Don't ask me to spell it. <laughs> okay, but. I recently came across one of those shorts where he is talking about God. And this man is brilliant. Okay, Neil deGrasse is a brilliant individual. Absolutely brilliant. He is. Um, he is. But when it came to the context of God, he made the blunder that most people do. Virtually everybody does. How does a loving God, how does a good God allow, what was it, the thing that happened in Haiti? The tsunami, the earthquakes, these are the beginning of sorrows. Hmm? How could a good God allow that to happen? See, and what a brilliant man like Neil deGrasse is not intuiting, is that man has free will. You know, you reap what you sow. If you sow to your flesh, you will reap death. If you sow to the capitalist spirit, you will reap life. Okay? And it, it, was, it was very fascinating that such a brilliant man made kind of a silly blunder, not intuiting that this is the result of mankind. The thing in Haiti, whatever, what, what, what was it, the earthquake or tsunami or whatever it was, look at the Haitian nation. No, no pun intended there. 
Look at the nation of Haiti. Okay? Look at the devilment. Look at the satanic influence that was within that nation. Okay? And we wonder how America is skirting along because of the body of Christ, the church of the living God that is within that nation. Okay? I find it, I just find it interesting that such a brilliant man, you know, who, you know, you know, he didn't totally reject the idea of God because even in the short that I saw, he said that science and God, he, he said this, can go together. Okay, Neil deGracie, science and God are like peas and carrots. Okay, God, <laughs> God is the founder of what we can consider true science. The atheists, with their yeager has God said, look for other crazy things. Okay, but what I find interesting, why I brought that up, is look at this verse: "The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. Knowledge comes from understanding." Understanding comes from wisdom. But the mouth of fools who say in the heart there is no God feedeth on foolishness. Mr. DeGracie, Neil DeGracie is his name. You go find him. You can, listen to him. He's interesting. He brings up real scientific stuff. Okay? <laughs> his explanation on the alien thing which, they're, aliens don't exist, people. They're devils, okay? But the alien thing, okay? Uh, here, i got to write this down. Why does God allow suffering? Okay, this, this is what Neil deGracie himself blundered at. And the alien thing, I like what he said. He's like, okay, he, he was speaking hypothetically, and he laughed about it. It's like, okay, how come the aliens that show up seem to only appear to the, the Navy? How come the aliens that travel light years to come to Earth and crash? <laughs> I mean, come on, think about that. You, you nut jobs who believe in aliens. You know, you, you know, there are no, you know, Eddie Torres is not out there, okay? If that were the case, then this is not true. But anyway, all the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. In context with 14, the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge. Huh? And then you go to Psalm, ni Psalm 19. The words of the Lord are pure words and stuff like that. Okay? Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love, truth is, than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Proverbs 23 now. Proverbs 23. Thank you. I opened right up to it. <laughs> When thou sittest to eat with a ruler. Uh, there is a video done, uh, which ruler or whatever, I'll find it, where we go into this in depth. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, a ruler. Satan himself said, all this has been given unto me. And whosoever I will, I give it. If you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Okay? And Satan is not on a throne in hell. That's, that's a fairy tale. Okay? But Satan is allotted certain things for judgment's sake. Okay? So, what ruler are you sitting before? The Lord Jesus Christ? God our Father? Or the little G God of this world? There's only two. There isn't an option C. Okay? And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Now, context is going to use food as the analogy. But look at 
the idolatry, perfect example, the uh, December 25th day of Roman Catholicism. Look at how Christians have an appetite for tradition because they've always done it. That's a perfect example. Their appetite is for tradition that is contrary to scripture. Their appetite is for I, 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 me, me, me. But as we're going to see, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Okay? And he shows you the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Dainties. You watch those disgusting short videos long enough. Uh, you, you can feel it, saints. You can feel the, the um, subliminal message that's being produced and pronounced onto lost people who follow that stuff, who go mindlessly through that. It's like they see this image of a fake reality fake reality yeah yeah talk about not oxymoron of this reality that isn't real right real people doing things that real people don't do <laughs> okay and they're they're meant to think like well my life is horrid in comparison to that don't be envious of the things of the world don't want what the world offers. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? This is in Timothy, but right away what comes to my mind is Job. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Verses 20 on to verse 22. Then Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground in worship. Job in one fell swoop had virtually everything taken away from him. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, Naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. You're not going to take anything with you. The very first recognized emperor of China, of the Qin Dynasty, spelled Q-I-N, the Qin Dynasty. He was the guy who had was buried with all those terracotta soldiers to take with them, to take with him. Hmm. Wilt thou set thine eye, oh, back in Proverbs 23, verse 5, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. See, what Satan offers people isn't enduring for eternity. You have to be eternally minded. Like right here, right now, right? All we have is today, and amen, this is true. But Satan catapults off of that to guide you into sin. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You're a Christian. You're saved because you just believe. You're saved because you can utter, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Animus. They are their own God. You know, these so called self theists. You know. They're up here and God's down here. Yeah? Same with the sleazy believers. They're up here and God is a little bit higher than what the a the self theist, excuse me, but somebody that's right here. You know, that's the that's the equation for these people. 
Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But thine heart is not. Imagine living with someone who... I, and I've talked to, to uh, kids, children, you know, teenagers and stuff like that, who uh, have this kind of thing going on. Some of you who are in marriages, you have a place to... You have a roof over your head. You have clothes. You have food. Your basic needs are met. But it's a stalled ox and hatred therewith. All your physicalities are met, but love, truth, is missing. Better is a dinner where herbs is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. I've talked to a lot of people who are in that kind of a case. Their physical needs are met. They have food. They have clothing. They have a roof over their head. But what's lacking? Love. True love, which is truth. I pity people in such a case. I, I, I really do. I really do. I really do. The morsel which thou hast eaten up shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. What happens? Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. The words that we are to speak today in this dispensation are to come from the scripture. And the fool says in his heart, There is no God. Hmm. Now go back to Proverbs 17. This, this concept, this thing of you're with someone and you, you, you have food, you have clothing, you got a roof over your head, you turn the, the faucet and the water comes out clear, not brown and stink like rotten eggs. You got a toilet that can flush, okay? You have these things at your disposal, but yet... Unequally yoked. But yet, that parental, fatherly thing, or motherly, is not there. Oh, brethren. Talk to one of these children, teenager kind of stuff, okay? When it comes down to it with that kind of a thing, where they're taken care of. But the father, the mother... The mother's out. The mother's out doing what she isn't supposed to do. What does that mean? Woman's supposed to be at home. Guiding the house. And the father gets home after working all day. Praise the Lord. Sits in front of a television. And you feed off of that filth. It's no wonder so many of you are messed up spiritually. It's no wonder. It's no wonder. Proverbs 17 now, verses 11 on to verse 20. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. In what context is it cruel? Well, an evil man doesn't want to do what God wants done. An evil man boots the door out of the way and climbs up some other way. An evil man justifies their sin. Mankind, okay? So, cruel. Cruel messenger. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To someone who is their own God, justifying themselves all the way, that's cruelty, isn't it? Think about that. That's cruelty, isn't it? Let a bear rob the her whelps meet a man, rather than a fool in his folly. You can look that up online about the ferocity of a, a female bear guarding her cubs. Uh, if you're a man and you don't have a firearm, uh, you, you're probably going to die. You ain't going to outrun no bear unless you can get into your vehicle and speed off real quick. You know? Who 
Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. For my love they give me hatred. When they were sick and in need, I prayed. But here I am. And where are they, right? Thus is the plight of the, of the saints, the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. Pick your battles. Pick your battles. The Lord will be the one that's like, I want you to do this. Now remember, you're not like the Calvinists say, you're not held at gunpoint to do. You've got to make the right choices. But you've got to remember, the fight isn't ours, it's of the Lord's. And when you try to get into something that the Lord truly doesn't want you to get involved in, you know, talk, uh, beg your pardon, talk uh, about pisseth against the wind. Leave off contention before it be meddled with. Speak not in the ears of a fool. For he will despise the wisdom of thy words. He that justifieth the wicked. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. You're seeing that every day. And he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Put that in comparison with verse 11. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Rebellion against who? God saith, don't lie with mankind as with womankind. That hasn't changed. They still do. They call that love. And then a saint out of love, truth, it's like, hey, you're a cruel messenger. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Well, how many of you have spoken up when you actually know that the Lord was the one? It's like, hey, I, hey, <laughs> Duke, come on, come on, open that trap of yours. And you do. And what happened? You get pot thrown on you. You get gravel kicked at you. You get threatened. Which I don't take well to. <laughs> you get the tracks knocked out of your hand. You get followed and accosted by a wicked female devil. <laughs> a wicked female filled with a devil, I should say. Excuse me. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? Like I've told you before, when you got one of these idiots, and I'm being polite, who said, well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he does. And he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool who says in his heart there is no God to get wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, seeing he hath no heart to it. Why? Because he is his own standard, or she is her own standard. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. I have friends who are brethren. 
a brother born for adversity. A friend, you can have I, I got all kinds of friends, right? Do they encourage you in truth? Or when you're doing something which is clearly wrong, are they like, eh, forget about it. Hey, are you happy? I'm happy. You're okay. We're okay. Hey. They, they, you know, they like pat you on the back as you're about to jump off of the proverbial cliff. That's friend. And a brother is born for adversity. A brother who will go through the fire with you. But also to be the contrary to a cruel messenger when one is not seeking after rebellion. Roll, roll that around in the brain case for a little bit. How many of you have had friends who ought to, if they were a true friend, it's like, hey, dude, you know what you're doing is going to kill you? You know what you're doing is wrong? Huh? Now, see, in the context of a brother, okay, someone who is actually saved, there's a totally different dynamic. But you lost people? You got a whole bunch of friends, don't you? Friends that pacify. I have friends who are brethren who tell me truth. They show love. A brother is born for adversity. I have a question for you. And I want you saints to think about this. As I have thought about this. And I seriously, take some time today and think about this. Now, we're going to go over this scripturally, okay? But, question. Two brethren as an example to start. Your mother's daughter or your father's daughter. You know what they are. You know they're not of us. You know that for certain. And, and that's true. What would happen if you came across them? Destitute, needful, outside, cold and rainy. They need food. What would you do? You know, a lot of people like to go to James chapter 2. Uh, that's, a, that's a good one for the description box, James 2. And they like to make James 2 doctrine for today. When anyone with half a brain can read where James says, can, that, can his faith save him? Now we are saved today by grace through faith, but Paul says with a resounding yes, what's, what's going on? James is written for another dispensation. That, hey, that'll be for you in the description box. If you don't want to watch that and spout off at the mouth, you're going to be blocked and be done with you. I'm done with you. Okay, that's been answered. But here's, here's the thing. The instruction in righteousness, not doctrinal, the instruction in righteousness in James about you come across someone who's naked and you say, peace, be warm, be filled, but you don't help them out. Okay? It's written for a dispensation where faith and works is, is how it is for the time of Jacob's trouble. And the only eternally secure ones during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. Okay? Again, when you got these idiots who tell you that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end, they're lying to you. Don't trust them. Salvation changes within the dispensation. But the instruction in righteousness is there. Let me, give, let me give you a little bit more of a personal thing here. What if that little, little fledgling of pride, Mr. Winepress himself, was out there, homeless, needed help. Hmm? And just by a quinky dink, which don't exist, I happen upon him. Who I, and I don't think that little boy's saved at all. He doesn't think I'm saved. That's good for him. Uh, whatever, kid. But here's the point. 
but I still help him. He's not my brother. And if I were not a saved man, I would smack the yellow off the, that kid's teeth. If I were not a saved man, would I help him? What about that, that jerk from England? That If I were dangling from a cliff, that jerk went from England come across me, he'd stomp on my hands and let me drop. But if he knew there were people who would see him do something, ah, well, people are like, oh, well, here, let me, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> they do it for the what? Visual stimuli. Question I ask myself. Question I ask myself. And I want you, brethren, to roll this around in your head. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do if it was just a step from death, you're helping your worst enemy out and going to judgment if you didn't help. What would you do? What would you do? John 14, 15 on the 31. Now, something to consider here. Jesus Christ is going to the cross to die be buried and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and he is going to shed his blood for the remission of sin on the cross. Okay? But, John 14, that hadn't happened yet. Okay? He is preparing the apostles for the coming dispensation today which we have, which is by grace through faith. Until he died, buried, and raised again the third day according to the scriptures, the law was still binding. Okay? You have to remember that. It's like, well, Brad, that's simple. I know it is. That's the distinguishing factor. Okay? That's the distinguishing factor. Okay? You have to remember that. All right? So when he is saying this, He's saying it in the context while the law is still binding, but yet he's preparing them for what is to come today, this dispensation. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And see, today, heretics will come along and say, you got to keep the command. You couldn't do that if you tried. That is settled in Acts chapter 15, buddy. Okay? And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the capital S Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Shall be. That's important because that shows you what? That the Holy Ghost had yet to be given. Hence, eternally secure. Okay? Got rightly divide the word of truth, the truth, people. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? We've, we talked about this. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. He's eternal. Jesus Christ is come. In the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. You know, he's alive. He is. Okay. At that day ye shall know that I am in the, my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. I in you, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay. I am in my Father. Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay, that's what that means. All right? He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. 
Okay? Now remember, he had not yet died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. But see, that's a preparatory thing. Today in this dispensation, if you deny him, he will also deny you. Not salvation. Not salvation, but mercy, grace, provision, fellowship, comfort, all kinds of things. But salvation, no, because if you go to him his way and he saves you, you're once saved, always saved, sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? So, this is denoting... What about the <laughs> Mr. Dudley, do right. You're such a wicked devil. This is denoting what? Choice. Choice. We do what the Lord says in the scripture, rightly divided, because he first loved us. We're not being forced to do what's right. We have to make the right decisions. And for you Calvinists, uh, as I heard the phrase, Calvatards, I like that, um, that's completely foreign to you. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Check this out. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Keepeth them not. How convenient it is for some of us saints when we're about to engage in something that we know God hates. It's there because the Lord is in us and he will bring us to recollection. But how conveniently sometimes we like to forego these things in order to pacify what? If man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he hears not mine, but the Father which sent me. Okay? These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Okay? He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Wherefore flee from adultery. Be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A little doesn't hurt though, right? You're being too extreme, right? Why are you so serious, Brad? See how it works? That's so serious. <laughs> peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because why? God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, and of power, and of a sound mind. Which <laughs> Dudley do right guy claimed to have had, but he's crazy. <laughs> he's a wicked devil. But anyway, never mind about that yuts. Okay? See, you can pacify something with worldly things like in front of a TV, on one of a health phone or, or a tablet. But it's a continual thing that you got to keep doing, doing, doing. We need to be renewed day by day, yes. But see, when I die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When I die, I'm going to go to heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. You can't kill me. All you can do is kill this. And after that, that's all they can do. Even though the Jesuits do not forgive nor forsake, all man can do is take, a, take this out. 
And that's peaceful to know that. That's a reassurance. That's a blessed assurance. What a foretaste of glory divine. And see, what's missing in Christianity will justify what is wicked and evil to replace that peace with worldly things. You go to the devil for comfort, good luck. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. God is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. This body made of earth will return to the earth. The spirit will go unto God who gave it. The soul. Man became a living soul. The soul is greater. Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. Okay? So when he says, My Father is greater than I, it's not this ridiculous, stupid trinity. The soul. The soul is greater. You're seeing my sagging sin suit. You don't see the real me. And interestingly, interestingly enough, the selfiest, self-theist, excuse me, well, some of them deny the existence of a soul, which is, in, of course, clear contradiction to Scripture. Man became a living soul. Right there, verse 28, is not a reference onto the stupid satanic Catholic, Babylonian, Egyptian, Catholic Trinity. No. God is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. The soul is greater than the body. The word was made flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Okay? And the words he speaks... They are spirit and they are life. Okay? Okay, people? And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it has come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk with you, much with you. For the prince of this world, the prince of the power of the air, the god of this world, Lucifer, Satan, For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise. Let's go hence. Second Chronicles chapter 19. Now, the love he's preparing the disciples, the apostles, excuse me, for the coming dispensation. But this thing about love, love is truth. Love, they receive not the love of the truth. What is truth? Your truth is my truth, and my truth is your truth, and blah, 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 blah. No. Jesus Christ. Okay? <laughs> okay? Jesus Christ. Verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The definitive, definitive article. But when it comes to this thing of love, there are many facets to love. Yes, there is. But see, the love that Christianity offers you is hatred. In uh, second, where are we? Second Chronicles 19, we see this very, very interesting statement here. Now we got to remember also, this is in a different dispensation under the law. Eternal security was not there under the law. 
the death, burial, and resurrection had not yet happened. Okay? All right? Under the law, the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go. All right? Totally different dispensation. But, 2 Chronicles 19, verses 1 on to verse 4. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace, to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, Hanani, or Hanani, excuse me, the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Today in this dispensation, as it has been throughout all time, there are those who have given their heart unto the devil. And they have gone so far contrary to God. That's why a lot of these Jesuit coadjutors are messed up beyond recognition. recognition because there has to be a working, at least knowledge of what is true, for most of these pond scum to deceive the way they are deceiving. And when you get in such a case where you go so far from what you already are aware of truth but denying it a point of no return not that the Lord cannot save you but that you have gone so far you're an old and foolish king old and foolish king who will no more be admonished the older you get the harder it gets as you get set in your ways. Okay? But now, let's context. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. There is nothing good in man. The only good that is in us saints is Jesus Christ, the Father, who dwells within us. Other than that, in the sagging sin suit, Paul talks about this, there is nothing good. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee. In that thou, he's describing works. Check this out. Okay, works, different dispensation. Faith and works under the law. Okay, God rightly divide the word of truth. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee. In that thou hast taken away the groves on the land, works, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. Now see, instruction and in righteousness for us today on that. The ungodly, those who spit in the face of God, who are our enemies? Who we are to what? Hate with perfect hatred. But the question comes up, see, this is a different dispensation now. What if that very one was dangling off of a cliff? Would you just walk away? Stomp his hands, or what would you do? Well, see, in Scripture now, go to 1 Kings 20... Here's another thing that we need to consider. 1 Kings 20, verses 31 under verse 34. Go they have. Go they have. Yeah, yeah. With his lovely manipulating wife, Jezebel, who actually wore the pants in that family, <laughs> who painted her face when Jehu came around. Different video. But, 1 Kings 20, 31 on the verse 34. Ahab beat Ben-Hadad. Okay? You read the context, the whole thing from, uh, uh, from 1 on the verse 31 on your own time. Check this out. And his servant said unto him, who? Ben-Hadad, who was defeated, was beaten. 
who we're going to see was set for judgment of the Lord to be executed by the hands of Ahab, the wicked king, one of the most wicked kings in the history of Israel. A very similar thing happened with King Saul. He was supposed to wipe out Amalek, but everything about Amalek. But he saved, he spared some of the people and the choice of the stuff. And what happened with Saul? The people did it! But yet he was king. <laughs> he was blaming the people for his actions. Oh, you see that? If you hadn't have been like this, I wouldn't have done that. See, that's evasion from taking responsibility for your own actions. Okay? Well, you have no rule over your own spirit? No, you want to blame someone else for your own thing. That's very telling, especially in some of these so-called Christians. And his servant said unto him, Behold now, we have heard that the kings of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins and ropes upon our heads. And go out to the king of Israel, peradventure, he will save thy life. So they girded themselves, so they girded sackcloth on their loins, and put ropes on their heads, and came to the king of Israel. Stop. You know the um, unjust steward, when the Lord caught him, and it's like, hey, you're going to lose your stewardship. Okay, what did the unjust steward do? It's like, I'm going to lose this, so my rear end is in danger. Did he seek to find, try to find reconciliation between him and his Lord? No. It was a self-serving action. Thus far of what we looked at, Ben Haddad, self-serving that that's significant that's significant and said thy servant Ben Hadad saith I pray thee let me live and he said this is Ahab talking now is he yet alive he is my brother really Keep reading. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him, and did hastily catch it. So, hey, 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 okay, look at him. He's going to, see what I told you? He's going to let us live. And they said, thy brother ben -Hanad. You are because you say you are. You're my brother, huh? Yeah. Right. Then he said, go ye, bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came forth to him, and, check this out, and he caused him to come up into the chariot. So not only did Ahab, one of Israel's most wickedest kings ever, with Ben-Hadad, who ripped open, you read about that, um, how um, uh, Elisha wept in front of him for the evil that Ben-Hadad would do to the children of Israel. Okay? Ben Haddad was not a good guy. Okay? Neither was Ahab. So I guess in a sense, maybe they were brethren, huh? Think about that. Let that roll around in your head for a little bit. But he said, come on. Come on. And look at what Ben Haddad does now. Now we could debate, which we won't, uh, whether or not the sincerity and, you know, like good intentions. The uh, road to hell is paved with good intentions, buddy. And Ben Hadad said unto him, The cities which my father took from thy father I will restore. And thou shalt make streets for thee in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria. Then said Ahab, I will ascend, I will send thee away with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him and sent him away. Now, if you continue to read, let's read it. 
And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor, In the word of the Lord, smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Hit me. The guy's like, You're a prophet, I ain't hitting you. Then said he unto then said he unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And our adversary, the devil, uh, walketh about as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour? <laughs> Different dispensation. Under the law. Eternal security was not there. The death, burial, and resurrection was not there. The blood on the cross was not there either. Okay? Okay? And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Hmm. Minds me of Saul, doesn't it? Then he found another man, who I believe witnessed. It's like, oh, 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 no, he's coming by me. <laughs> then he found another man and said, smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, so that in smiting he wounded him. I, I don't know if this is how it was, but I can only imagine. It's like, here's this guy. It's like he just seen, you know, the prophet go to that guy. It's like, hey, hit me. Or smite me. And he refuses, and then the lion eats him up. And then the guy saw that. It's like, oh, oh no, don't, don't. He's coming by me. And he's like, smite me. It'd be like, boom. <laughs> I would like, boom. Hey, you want me to hit you again? <laughs> okay. I, I, I doubt that. But, I mean, just, just the thought of that. Okay. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way and disguised himself with ashes on his face. Kind of a reminiscent to face paint, maybe? Because, you know, like they, uh, with the Indians and stuff like that, and I've, I've seen this, they, they'll take ash and they'll add some kind of other thing to it and it comes black and they use ashes. Okay? Never what? Never been to a powwow before. And as the king passed by, King Ahab, he cried unto the king and said, Thy servant went out into the midst of battle, and behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man, if by any means he be missing. Then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. It might be, what does that mean? Let's keep reading. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be. Thyself has, has decided it. And he hasted the prophet, and took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned that he was of the prophets. Translation of verse 39. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction. Therefore thy life shall go for his life, thy people for his people. And the king of Israel went to his house heavy and displeased and came to Samaria. Totally different dispensation. Totally different dispensation. The cross, the blood, not there. Eternal security, not there. Okay? Totally dis different dispensation. The point is, someone who was appointed, when your time is up, your time is up, and someone, Ahab, let Ben Haddad go. Second Peter. Now, see today, though, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, let's look at one verse in Second Peter chapter three. Okay, Second Peter chapter three. Just one verse. Verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. As some men count slackness, 
but is long suffering to usward, usward meaning mankind, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, turning from yourself that you are your own God, that you're a good person, the lesser turning to the greater. God is a God of mercy. God would rather be merciful. But see, God is a God of specificity. Okay? God is a God of specificity. There, there is no gray area. It's either or. Okay? And Christianity wants to interject that. When you got some guy, especially a King James Bible believing Christian, that makes that utters the statement, well, the Bible is silent on this. Really? Brethren, you got one of these King James Bible believing preachers who say to you that the scriptures is silent on anything? Get away from that man. Because if you say that, number one, they're trying to justify themselves in something they know is not right. Number two, if this is silent on something, then is, is it sufficient? Well, well, what about this now? I don't know. Okay, I'm not God. I don't know everything. God forbid. Okay? But it's here somewhere. <laughs> okay? And if it isn't, think about this. Hey, King James Bible believing Christian, think about this. You say, well, Bible doesn't say that. You're right. Bible's say hardly anything. But you're you're saying that scripture is silent on something? Then how could it be sufficient? Well, it's sufficient for our salvation. Um, yes, it is. Yes, it is. But if you're what you're saying is if you were to throw a question at the Lord that scripture can't answer? That's ultimately what people, when they say, well, the scriptures are silent. It doesn't say anything about that. Have you looked? Or is it that you don't want to look? You know, I've come on, you know, some of the atheist guys have asked me all these, like, scientific questions, so-called, you know, very complex using words that I had to look up in the dictionary. And I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's like, hey, dude, I can't answer that. <laughs> I can't. I can't answer that. Does that mean that the answer isn't in Scripture? No. No. And there are things that we don't know. Absolutely. But see, the minute you as man come to Scripture and say, well, there's, God doesn't talk about that, that an answer can't be found to what you propose to the Lord, He can choose not to answer you. He can do that. Absolutely. But... The minute you get into the area of where this is silent on something, then that, then that's dangerous. That's dangerous. And there's nothing wrong with you saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, you know, like I've been asked crazy <laughs> questions by some A, you know, self-theists with all these, uh, you know, about, oh, um, Take tight, what is it? Tectonic things about the crust and about fo uh, what uh, the thing about plants growing, uh, whatever that is. It's like, dude, I can't answer those questions. <laughs> okay, does that mean scripture silent about them? No. Ask another, ask another saint. Okay. All right. But see now, go to Ezekiel thirteen. Go to Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel 13, verses 17 on to verse 23. Likewise, thou son of man, different dispensation, under the law, instruction in righteousness is why we are looking at this today. 
the way we are made right today is not how they were made right under the law. Someone comes around, by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Reject them. They're a lying, stinking devil. Heretic. They're a devil. Get away from them. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. You're your own God. You save yourself by your own belief. You can say something. You're elect. You go to the church that uh, Satan founded. Okay, yeah. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women. Ooh, mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Mm. That sew pillows to all, to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Ah, the hunter of souls. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, you're provincial. Yeah. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? I got that um, picture of the marquee or whatever of the church building. You know, where are you going when you die? It says, come inside. What are they saying? You got to go to a church building to learn truth. That's going to be the thumbnail for this one, for this video. Okay, anyway, anyway. Thank you, I remember that, okay? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? Hirelings. Hirelings. To slay the souls that should not die. And to save the souls alive that should not live. By your lying to my people that hear your lies? Universalists are notorious for this. That justify sin. Uh, there's a universalist church building uh, near McHenry on the way to Nimsey. That does you no know, good to know. That openly will conduct sodomite marriages. Someone is going for a cliff. Christianity. God loves you. Keep going. A saint who shows true love. Stop. You're going to die. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows. Now remember, pillows are not always soft because you read about how Jacob set up two stone for his pillows. Pillows is something basically that you can rest your head on. Okay? Yes, pillows are like my, my special pillow. <laughs> okay? Good for the neck. Anyway, all right, but something to rest your head upon. Okay? Wherewith ye hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt, to make them fly. How do they do that? You just believe and receive. Don't worry about it. Just, you, you shouldn't do that, but go ahead. Hey, don't worry. God's not angry at you. God loves you unconditionally. Are, are you sure about that? Uh, I've heard from other people that God, don't, no, don't worry about it. Go on. Live it up. You, they're being too extreme. Fly. Soar. Soar like an eagle, an unclean bird. Fly. Don't let, don't let those uh, guys clip your wings. You know, love is love. Run into this a lot with the sodomites. It's your problem that God hates what you're doing. Okay? It's your problem. God has made himself very clear. But yet you can find a Christian who will let you fly. Fly on in your trespass. Fly towards the end of that cliff. God loves you. God's not angry at you. 
making twofold more the child of hell than themselves. And hence, when someone is deluded in that kind of a way, the farther they get from that point where they can't go back. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And you shall know that I am Lord. Can't wait for that day. Because the Jesuit coadjutors, the infiltrators, the Christians are hunting for Rome, for Satan. For their own pocketbook. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad. I have not made sad. And strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. While well, they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Now remember that for the, uh, for the description box. Servants of corruption. Promise them liberty. Therefore shall ye see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. In Psalm 139, in Psalm 139, we see, we see, Psalm 139, verses 20, under verse 24. Psalm 139, verses 20, under verse 24. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Thy name in vain. Christian. Do not I hate them, Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against me? Against thee, excuse me. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. You hate my father? I am to hate you with perfect hatred. Period. And that is the perfect hatred. A perfect heart is a heart that belongs to God. Okay, not sinlessly perfect. You couldn't do that if you tried. So if your heart is perfect with the Lord, a perfect hatred is what? Hating what the Lord hates and loving what the Lord loves. The Lord hates evil. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And he does. Uh, what he's referring to is self-examination. Who judges you? The Lord. How? Through the scripture. Self-examination. Try me and know my thoughts. Do they line up? Or are they all about you? Just as if I, huh? And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Uh, Luke 17... Luke 17, Luke 17, verses 3 on to verse 4, oh, I just tore, the, just tore that page, Luke 17, ah, verses 3 on to verse 4, And this is eternal life, that they may, might know thee, the only... I'm in John 17, excuse me. <laughs> Luke 17. <laughs> Luke 17. I'm sorry, brethren. Luke 17, 3 and 4. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. 
And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day return, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Well, who is my brother? You're my brother because you say you're my brother, huh? Look at Ahab and ben Hadad. Your brother because he says he is, huh? Psalm 97, Psalm 97, verses 10 on to verse 12, Psalm 97, verses 10 on to verse 12. Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. Well, what's evil? Huh? You ask a Christian... Evil as a saint like me, like one of the brethren, who come to them with the perfect standard, the authorized version, and telling them, hey, hey, dude, this, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Justify themselves. Justify their traditions, man. See, Christianity calls the faith that was once delivered onto the saint evil. And you're starting to see this a lot in these King James Bible believing Christians too. Unfortunately. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Capital L light because it's the beginning of a verse is sown for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. And I'm not talking about the guy from Maine either. <laughs> With his holiness. It might be a little, well, Brad, what do we do? See, a lot of these guys too, a lot of Christians, of course, like to go to the Sermon on the Mount. And I've seen this. I've dealt with this. We've talked about this. Okay, the Sermon on the Mount. And they like to go to Matthew 5, 43 on to verse 48. The Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, which is 110% works. Faith is mentioned one time in the Sermon on the Mount, and that's in the context of a rebuke. Okay. Matthew 5, 43 on to verse 48. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. This is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus Christ will be on a throne, literally, you're going to be able to see him. Hence, faith is uh, null and void because you're going to be able to see him. Okay? So it's all works. That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise as you end on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. And you can tie that in with uh, Zechariah or Amos about if they don't go uh, to worship the Lord at the Feast of Tabernacles, they will be withheld rain. Hence, a farming society during all of that. Okay? What is that? Get away from me. Okay? For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now this is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven where it's all works. All works. You're going to be able to see the Lord. You read Hebrews 11 verse 1. Okay? And verse 6. Alright? So... During the kingdom of heaven, your works are what is going to define you. Okay? And 
your enemies that you don't love by demonstrating to them truth, they're going to have to deal with the Lord themselves personally. Okay? But now for instruction in righteousness, instruction in righteousness is here. Absolutely. But see, brethren, how many of you have been in a situation where it's like, okay, Lord, what do I do in this situation? Someone comes to you asking for help. What do you do? What do you do? Go to John, uh, Acts 16. Go to Acts 16, verses 6 on to verse 10. This is where the Lord will lead and guide you. Because there are those out there who will help anyone. Okay? But if the Lord is the one who is guiding, He will guide you whether or not to help that individual or not. Because, hey, there are some people out there, these King James Bible believing Christians, who won't even extend a hand to a homeless person. Well, because they're just going to do... Why not go with them and buy them something to eat? Why not go to a resale shop and get them a jacket? Hmm? No, you don't give them money. But you provide for what they need. But there are some of these King James Bible believing Christians who won't even do that. The contrary is true. There are these Christians who will go to these guys who are blatantly spitting in God's face and offer to help them. Example, Aaron Ra, that self-theist nut job, okay? Blatantly offending, blatantly spitting in God's face. Well, you think I'm going to go buy him a hamburger? <laughs> uh, no. The point. See, when you, you, you're out there, brethren, you're supposed to be an ambassador for who? Christ. Led by the Lord, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. You make a grave error when you leave your house with a prepared statement. Meaning, okay, I mean, I'm saying, uh, if you go, if you die, do you know where you're going when you die? You know God loves you. That's a prepared statement. That's a prepared state. That's why you want the sword of the Spirit, the Scriptures on you everywhere you go. Because the Lord is the one who will guide you in your testimony. Okay? He will, Acts 16, 6 on to verse 10. Now when they had gone through Phrygia, Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit, to preach the word in Asia. Don't go there. Don't do that. I don't want you to do that. After they were come to Mysa, they essayed to go into Bithynia. But the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, suffered them not. And those of you saints, you, you know that the Lord in these situations can and will work muy rápido. It's like, okay, Lord, you know, you say a little Maya prayer. It's like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Okay, don't let me be led by my own flesh because, you know, that's contrary. Lead me in what you want me to do. Here I am. <laughs> no, lead me, guide me. He will, see. Or do you secretly want to put a little notch in your belt there, huh? huh? Is that what you want, huh? You want a little notch in your belt? Huh? So you can walk around. Uh, I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. You pompous! Oh! Someone actually said that to me before. Should have vomited on his shoes. And they came, and they passing by Mysa came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately 
we endeavor to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Being guided by the Lord. You walk out, I know that this is what the Jehos do. This is what the Mormons do. This is what the independent, uh, independent fundamental Baptists do. They have a checklist kind of thing. There's another good reference for the description box. The checklist, guys, okay? They have a prepared state. It's like, this is what you do. This, is, Yeah, led by the Lord through the scriptures. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who's doing the witnessing? God's using you, but is he the one who's witnessing through you? Or are you just showing off? Think about that. Think about that. And you got to remember, in the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord Jesus was offering the kingdom of heaven unto their great Jewish people. Yes, he was. But during the law, under the law, you have to remember, dear saints, go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 again. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 10. See, under the law, God was dealing with one nation salvifically, Israel. The Hebraic Jews taken from Shem, not Ham or Japheth. A Gentile someone who wasn't a Hebrew under the law could be saved, could be made right with God, but they had to go the way of the Hebrew to get it. Okay? Hence, under the law, Israel was the equivalent of what we, the body of Christ, are today. Deuteronomy 4, 5, and 10. 5 on to 10. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. See, in the Old Testament, the Lord was dealing with nations. In this dispensation, the Lord is dealing with you personally. There was a personal aspect within, under the law, yes, but I mean, come on. Even you heretics can get this one right. They were de God was dealing with nations, specifically Israel. That's why he was so brutal on them. Keep therefore and do them. Note in verse 5, in the land whither ye go to possess it, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people, being a testimony unto God under the law. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Yes, we saints living according to the scripture confounds the lost. But Christianity, hey, you got to be like the world to win the world. And the lost and the selfies see that. It's like, dude, you're on, you're on crack. We're supposed to be contrary because we do what the Lord said. You don't be like the world to win the world. Okay? But that's what Christianity does. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Dispensational difference. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me people, gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children. 
In context to what? In context to what? Verses 15 on to verse 20 now. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, <coughs> the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, <coughs> the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Unless thou lift up thine, uh, thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the under the whole heaven. And that to you. I'll worship the sun, the Baal cookie of Roman Catholicism, the bird, <laughs> third member of the Trinity, serpents, Nehushtan, going to a doctor, Jesuit doctor, getting their witchcraft, Verses 37 on to verse 40 now. And because, whoops, and because he loved thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight with the mighty with his mighty power out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, bring thee in. To give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart. That the Lord God, he is God in heaven above and upon earth beneath. There is none else. Verse 40. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments which I command thee this day. That it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee. And that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Different dispensation. And you also got to remember Leviticus chapter 18. It's like, well, why did God do that? See, Israel was to be God's example under the law. Today, in this dispensation, we saints are to be Christ's example. And I'm telling you, for example, the Hebraic Jews, they look at Christianity, especially King James Bible believing Christianity, and they wretch. You Christians are the problem. Leviticus 18, 24 on to verse 25. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these things the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. The Lord tells Israel, I, I, I'm not doing this because you're a great and mighty people. You're the smallest and you're the most stiff-necked. I'm bringing you in to get rid of these people who do all these things I hate, and that you may be my example. Oh, what an example Christians have made of God. What an example, huh? Tell me, self-theist. Tell me, Muslim. Tell me, Buddhist. Tell me, Hinduist. Tell me. You're right. You're right about Christianity. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, dear friend. But see, in Deuteronomy 32, we read something very peculiar. From verses 29 on to verse 35. 
under the law, a false prophet was to be killed. Why? Because the false prophet sought to take away the people of Israel from the Lord. In a dispensation where there was no eternal security, the Holy Ghost dwelling within them permanently, who would lead them and guide them on to all truth. Okay, you've got to remember that. That's why the severity of the law. Okay? Because eternal security was not there. But Deuteronomy 32, 29, under verse 35. And see, we only have today. Yes, we do. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. I could die at 150 today. I could die doing this. I could have a stroke or a heart attack. What are you doing? Playing video games? Doing drugs? Watching pornography, huh? Watching Hollywood movies and saying, hey, you know, you're being too serious. I believe and receive. You reap what you sow. I wish you young kids would understand that as you're indulging in every wicked, evil, thing and all these drugs know thou for all this God will bring thee into judgment therefore remove sorrow and youth uh, therefore remove sorrow from your heart for childhood and youth are vanity oh that they were wise that they understood this that they would consider their latter end we only have today but see Satan takes that and makes you cat and catapults off that. It's like, don't consider your latter end. Just go with today. If it feels good, do it. The Lord's like, you have only today. You're not promised tomorrow. Consider where you're going to go when you die, though. See how that works? How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital R, in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the rock, not Dwayne Johnson, that devil. Even our enemies themselves being, there, being judges. Look at Christianity. That God loves you. And even, like I said, atheists, it's like, what? You're on drugs. <laughs> okay. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Go Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? And again, the error that that brilliant Neil de Gracie makes it's like, okay, I see all this going on. God cannot be all good. Yes, he is. But see, God gives man free will. Free will. Okay? Free will. Um, free will. All right? Man is reaping what he has sown. You look at Haiti. Look at what, they're, what they practice as a nation. Look at America. Then why isn't America dead yet? <laughs> because of the body of Christ. Verse 35. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. The things that shall come upon them, make haste. Oh, and for Mr. De Gra uh, Gracie, um, verse 39, See now that I, even I, am he. There is no God with me. I kill. Yes, he does. I make alive. Yes, he does. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You're all going to die. All going to die. Satan says, 
Live for today. And gobble up all the sin you can. Don't worry about tomorrow. God says, tomorrow will take care of itself. Be concerned about today, because what if you die today? Where are you going to go? You see the difference there? Satan takes the same thing, and the saints go off this way, while the devil goes off this way. And the saints, it's like, you, you only got today. You don't know about tomorrow. What if you die today? If you die today outside of Christ, you're going to go to hell. How does, this, how does Satan um, counteract that? Don't worry about tomorrow. Hey, live as much as you want today. Go ahead and have that adulterous affair. Go ahead and have that sodomite affair. Go ahead and watch all that filth. Go ahead and take and ingest every kind of poison you can. Eat and drink, for tomorrow you die. You're not considering your latter end. First Corinthians chapter 4. But see, what's different about today? Uh, how many times have you been asked, brethren, why aren't we, it's like, okay, God in the Old Testament, well, it's like the, you just said, Brad, they were, they were killing the false prophets. Jesus Christ had yet to die, bury, and rise again and shed his blood on the cross. Their day, according to the scripture. Okay? Eternal security was not under the law. Today we have eternal security. Today when you go the way of the cross, the Lord seals you with himself. And you are sealed with God the Father. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. And He will lead you and guide you into all truth. That's why when you're out there, you go as He guides you. You don't go with a prepared statement. And trust me, if you're receptive, it's like, okay, somebody comes in front of you, it's like, hey, can you help me out? Hey, Lord, what do you want me to do? You'd be amazed at how quickly the Lord will respond to you. Not audibly, but obviously. That makes sense? And fret not, brethren, who is like, well, I don't know these cues. Yes, you do. You will know if it's you or the Lord. If not at the moment, but it's too late, and I spare you. And I spare you. First Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 9 on to verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 9 on to verse 15. What happens today? See, today, God is dealing with people individually. Okay? Individually. But when the body of Christ be redeemed, then God's going to turn his attention back to the nation of Israel. Okay? Hence, we're not putting people to death for preaching the wrong thing because the Lord is that spirit. The Holy Ghost has been given. The death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the, on the cross is there. Okay? Vengeance belongs unto him. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord and the law through the children of Israel. Through the law. Today, that judgment is reserved. Not yet. A lot of it's going to be poured out during the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, where are we? For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. Ye are wise in Christ, you Christians. Yeah. We are weak, saints. 
ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Yeah, you're honorable. You got the suit and tie. You got the piece of paper on your wall, right? You got their credentials. Yeah. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. This isn't a certain dwelling place, I can tell you that. And labor, working with our own hands. You know, preparing, studying is a self-work, but it also involves your hands, okay? All right? And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. How do we bless when we are reviled? by a demonstration of truth. Because usually when you're being reviled, someone doesn't want to hear the truth. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if they don't want to hear, they're going to observe your behavior. Being persecuted, we suffer. And as it says in... 2 Timothy chapter 3, being persecuted, we suffer it. Huh? 2 Timothy chapter 3, just one verse, I uh, know two verses, 12 and 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm saved because I'm a Calvinist. I'm saved because I can say something. Deceiving others, making them twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. Most people are, are willing to put up with a Christian than a saint because the saint will tell you the truth out of love. And love is truth. In Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Romans chapter 12. When you come to a situation, brethren... What would the Lord have you to do? You would be surprised, some of you, if you got out of that boat. Don't look aside with the wind boisterous, okay? You know, Peter, he stepped out the boat. He started walking on the water. He, uh, but he, he got distracted by the boisterous wind. Took his eyes off Jesus. You're in a situation where you're like, what do I do? Ask the Lord and he will guide you. Because what if you're in a situation where you want to help that person, but there's this reservation. It's like, okay, I want to help this guy. But if you're saying there's something in you, it's like, Lord, he's... No, don't. Then you come to find out the guy's a wicked devil who cursed God at his own death who said the F word of our father and died. Or the contrary. Come across a homeless guy, right? And you, Mr. King James Bible believing Christian. And I'm not gonna help that guy. What what what? Yeah, I'm not gonna give what about go with him? Go with him. Oh, I don't want my upholstery uh, messed up. I'm too important. Like, I could pray for you, but okay, that homeless guy needs some food. But I'll pray for you. I don't want to even spend anything on you. And you walk away. And if you are a saint, the Lord burdens you. It's like, you know, that was someone who's, who would have heard 
my word through you. I've made that mistake once. Never happen again. I spare you. Well, how do you know? How do you know? The Lord will lead you and guide you, brother, sister. The Lord will lead you and guide you. See, you gotta be, you gotta listen to the Lord. Okay? Romans chapter 12. Nine to the close. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. We have already seen. You that love the Lord hate evil. Do I not hate them who hate you, O Lord? Cleave to that which is good. There's none good but God. Be kindly one can be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, Jesus Christ is our hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Like when you're suddenly set in a situation. What do I do? Do I help this guy? Do I witness? What? 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 Leave me God, real Lord. Here he comes. Or here they come. That's when I was over there. You know, the kid with the gun in his belt. You know? I don't want to do that. Lord wanted it. You see how it works? Distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. How many of these people would readily open their doors for a saint? I don't know. You're afraid to find out, huh? I understand some of these big shots. You know, I understand. I, I get it certain people <laughs> would not readily open their door to someone claiming to be a saint. I, because that, Where's their fear, though? Would you take the time, your holiness, would you take the time to pray and ask the Lord on the spot, hey, should I open my door to this guy who's claiming to be a saint? But no, you're gonna hear man. Hey, I get that. I get that. I understand with some people. I understand. I understand where they're coming from. Okay? Yet don't just let anyone who says they are into your home. No, you do not. Did you ask the Lord? Did you ask the Lord? Or do you have a prepared statement? Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Bless. How do you bless them who persecute you? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. And if they don't hear the word, they don't want to hear it, they're watching you. To see how you're going to react. To see how you're going to represent Christ. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God unto them if they don't want to hear it. This is how you bless under persecution. And if they don't want this, how you behave yourself. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. How can I be the same mind with a Calvinist? How can I be the same mind of a Catholic? And it's getting to the point. It's getting to the point. 
How can I be of the same mind with a King James Bible believing Christian? Especially when they're involved in one of these cultic factions. How can I be of uh, one mind with a Methodist? How can I be of one mind with a Trinitarian? How can I be of one mind with someone who loves the world? Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Oh, you, you, you Mr. Japheth, uh, Japheth, huh? You Mr. Christian preacher, right? And what happens, you come across, what happens, you Japhethian Christian preacher, you come across a group of hermetic young men, one of them armed with a gun in his waistband. Are you going to be like, well, I'm, I'm Jesus. They don't want to hear from me. What are you going to do? Go on claiming the kindred thing? What if the Lord wanted you to be in that situation? How would you know? How would you know, tough guy? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Now, that doesn't mean if someone were to come into this apartment, my wife in bed, uh, that I'm not going to defend my house here and shoot them. It doesn't mean when I'm out there tracting or doing whatever, if someone attacks me, that I don't defend myself because I have a wife. Okay? No. Don't fight fire with fire. <laughs> which I have failed at miserably on many times. So have you, unless you're a no, perfect English creature. But yeah, don't fire, fight fire with fire. Why? Because fire always wins. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. But see, Christians will come to that and say, well, you got to give to get. What does that mean? Compromise. No. That's what Christianity is. Compromise. It's all compromise. <laughs> okay? You do one thing, I'm going to do what this says. Okay? All right? I'm not compromising the Lord to make you happy. And that's what Christianity preaches. You know? Oh, you're being too sick. Don't worry about it. You're being too extreme. No. See, Christianity will look at that verse and comprom say compromise. As much as lieth in you. Okay? If they are expecting you to compromise truth in order to be in a relationship with them, then you don't need to be in that relationship. Period. What concord hath Christ with Belial? Belial. Or Belial. I'll, I'll work on that later. Huh? Fellowship hath light with darkness. Dearly beloved. Here it is. Avenge not yourselves. But rather give place unto wrath. Wrath that is deferred for now. God's wrath is coming during the time of Jacob's trouble. In that time period, you people get left behind are not going to be able to... Believe it, even though it's written down for you. It's going to make everything look like child's play. For it is written, here's a cross-reference with Scripture, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. How do you love your enemy today? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. With the sincere milk of the word, 
with the bread of the word. Okay? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Okay? If he thirst, give him drink. For out of your belly shall flow living water, the sincere milk of the word. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Why? Revelation, oh, Revelation Romans 14, 11 on to verse 12. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. These are generalized statements. Everyone is going to. So then every one of us of mankind shall give account of himself to God. I have personally not been in the extreme situation where I was presented face to face with someone that is my actual, like someone who I despise. Mr. Winepress as an example. I have not been in a situation where I was face to face with that guy and he was in a situation where needed help and to be honest with you I don't know how I would react to that I'd like to tell you I would be here but what if the Lord's like and they and see they'll, they'll go to the Good Samaritan they'll go to the Sermon on the Mount things written for another dispensation not today instruction and in righteousness absolutely Absolutely. But see, are you prepared? That's the thing. Are you approachable? Are you prepared to be a vessel meet for his use? Or will you be like the most high? Think about this, brethren. Think about this. Roll this around your head. Search. Go there. Are tons of scriptures. More that we could have gone through. But search the scriptures about this. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Um, hope this hope this helps some of you. And I hope also this stirs some of you. Because I know for certain that there are some of us brethren who have purposely foregone a moment because of a fear, a fret, or a bias. Like I said, I don't know what I would do in a situation if the bloke were dangling from a cliff. I don't know. I, I believe I know what he'd do. But here's the ultimate question. What will thou have?